Hello, my name is Andy and I'm part of the development team at SDR Play. This video is an introduction to using the RSP2 with SDR Uno. Those of you that are familiar with SDR Uno version 1.1 and the RSP1 will already see that we have integrated the RSP functionality more tightly into SDR Uno to provide a better user experience. I want to take you through the installation process and on to using SDR Uno with the RSP2, so let's get started. Download the software from either the Start Here system or the Downloads area on our website. The links are in the video description. It's best to make sure no RSP devices are connected at this time. Run the installer and follow the on-screen prompts. The installation defaults should be good enough for most people, but you can customise things like the installation directory if you wish. After the software has installed, again Follow the prompts to connect your RSP2 and wait for the device driver to fully install. You will see the device driver progress in the taskbar. When that has completed, start SDR Uno. Those that have used SDR Uno before will be familiar with how SDR Uno starts with the main window. I just want to run through the main window before we move on to the other windows. The main window has really two functions. Firstly, it's where you will find the majority of the RSP controls. And secondly, it's the hub for the VRXs. I just want to explain what a vir virtual receiver is and how you can really make good use of them in SDR Uno. SDR Uno can take IQ data received from the RSP and pass it on to a number of virtual receivers. There is support for up to 16, which can be added here and deleted here. Please note that it is only possible to either add or delete a virtual receiver when the RSP is not in use. Each virtual receiver receives the entire bandwidth that has been specified by selecting the sample rate and decimation here. I'll come back to those in a minute. Each VRX can then post-process that data totally independently of any other VRX. I'll run through an example of how this works shortly but I just wanted to point that out as sometimes it's a very powerful feature that can be missed. Okay, back to the main window's other purpose that I mentioned, which is controlling the RSP. In this case, we're focusing on the RSP2, but if you had an RSP1 connected when you start SDR Uno, you will see a slightly different main window that has specific RSP1 controls. The Mirix MSI3101 chipset, used in the RSP1 and RSP2, is extremely flexible with many, many options and modes. This is great in principle, but we want SDR to be accessible to both advanced users and those just starting out in SDR. So we've carefully created a set of controls that we think enables both sets of users to get the best out of the RSP. The first thing to remember about the RSP2 is that there are now three RF inputs instead of the one on the RSP1. Port A is intended to be used as a general purpose RF port and is specified across a frequency range of 1.5 MHz to 2 GHz. Port B also works best from 1.5 MHz up to 2 GHz, but it's also the port with the BIOS-T functionality. You can operate ports A and B below 1.5 MHz, but below there the performance starts to degrade and it will not meet the specification. This is why we only specify their performance down to 1.5 MHz. The high impedance port, IZ, works from 1 kHz to 30 MHz. Note that the medium wave and FM broadcast notches are only functional on ports A and B, as you can see when I switch to the high impedance port. Next to the port selection is the sample rate and decimation controls. Select the sample rate you want to use from 2 MHz to 10 MHz and then select the decimation rate. These two parameters combine to give you a final sample rate which you can see in the top right hand corner. SDR Uno will then select the best fit IF filter bandwidth for the sample rate selected. For example, if I wanted to see 750 kHz of spectrum, I could select 3 MHz sample rate with a decimation of 4, that gives me that. 
At this point, I should say that as for all SDR devices, there is a trade-off uh, to be made between sample rate, bandwidth and CPU load. At the moment, I'm running a core i7 platform and you can see that even selecting a 10 MHz sample rate, I'm only using about 15% CPU load. I would keep an eye on the CPU load and reduce the sample rate if you have to. Next to those controls we have the RF gain slider. The RSP2 has a more complex front end system than the RSP1. For the RSP1 you could only turn the LNA on and off. However for the RSP2 there are 9 different gain settings to select between. This number does change if you are using the high impedance port or operating above 420 MHz but SDR Uno will change the controls if you switch to those conditions. At each of these RF gain settings there is an IF gain control range of 40 dBs. The IF AGC will adjust the IF gain to achieve a constant level into the ADC input to avoid overloading the ADCs. The basic principle with the RF gain slider when operating in the gain reduction mode is that when the slider is at the low end you will have the best noise figure but the worst overload performance whereas when it is at its high end you will have the worst noise figure and the best overload performance. Intermediate settings allow you to trade off noise performance for better signal handling or vice versa. So you now have the ability to select the optimum RF gain setting to achieve the best signal to noise ratio for any given reception and signal condition. You will see in the top right hand corner of the main window the gain reduction value is shown. In this release of SDR Uno for both the RSP1 and RSP2 we now have the ability to switch that to show gain rather than gain reduction. Click on settings and then input and you can now change the input display level from gain reduction to gain. Now in the main window you will notice that the slider polarity has reversed and the display has changed to gain. Whilst we're in the settings menu you will also see that this is where you can switch from 0 IF to low IF and also disable the IF AGC if needed. These are less commonly used so that's why they're in the settings menu and not confusing the main window. Now let's take a look at the CAL section of the settings. SDR Uno now provides a calibrated S meter and power measurement for signals referred back to the RSP input. If you want to add extra gain or loss due to preamps or cable loss for example you can add that in here. This is also where you can enable and disable the reference clock output. When you enable it you will see a green display on the main window. You can also add a PPM calibration value to correct for frequency errors in the TCXO. But there is a much better way of doing this in a fully automated way which I will come on to later. Ok let's get into the VRX and see the RSP2 in action. Click on RX this brings up the RX control panel. This is where you will specify frequency, modes and other settings specific to this VRX. Click on SP1. This brings up the main spectrum display window which can be resized like this. You can also bring up the output spectrum display by clicking SP2. This window again can also be resized. SDR Uno is a very modular system as you can see. The way you keep track of what window relates to what VRX is with the number system on the top right of each window. The first digit refers to the instance of SDR Uno that is running and always starts at zero. The next two digits relate to the VRX number shown in the main window next to the SP1 button. If I start another VRX by clicking add VRX and then I click on the RX, you will see that this RX control panel has 0 01 in the top right corner. One other thing to note is that new VRXs are disabled by default. This is shown by a red square next to the RX button. Click on the red square and it will turn green to signify that the VRX is now active. One last thing to mention about VRXs is that VRX0 always controls the RSP LO frequency. Every other VRX is slaved to VRX0 
and the frequency cannot be set outside of the available bandwidth as specified in the main window. For this demo I'm just going to show you broadcast frequencies but ev everything I do here can be done at any frequency. In the RX control panel I click on the frequency which now shows zero and importantly notice that the box has turned green. This means that SDR Uno is waiting for input and remains in that state until either carriage return is pressed to confirm the frequency input or escape is pressed to cancel it. A common mistake people make is to forget that and they cannot understand why even though when the frequency they want is showing in the display SDR Uno hasn't tuned to it. That's because nothing is confirmed until carriage return is pressed and the box turns back to being white again. Now I'm centered on my frequency I can select the mode I'm interested in and sub mode if required and make sure that the correct filter preset is selected. I can set the audio volume or the squelch level down here and if I need to see more bandwidth I can go back to the main window and change that on the fly. I can also use the zoom buttons in the SP1 display to zoom in on the spectrum and then scroll the frequency bar left or right. Alternatively, after zooming in, if your VFO is now outside of the visible display, just press the VFO button, which is to the right of the zoom buttons, and it will automatically center the VFO for you. OK, I can now click on the frequency, go to the FM band, select FM and wideband FM, and make sure that I'm set to 192 kilohertz bandwidth, and turn notch turn the notch filters on and off to show that it is working. Looking at the top right hand corner of the SP1 window you will see that both the LO and the VFO frequency are shown. In a zero IF receiver there is a phenomenon called the DC spike and whilst this is caused by very small DC offsets in the tuner it appears as an unwanted spur at the LO frequency. These offsets may only be a few millivolts but the spur they produce can be a lot larger than weak signals and it is therefore necessary to use software techniques to remove this spur. However what this also means is that any tones that are very close to the yellow frequency are also removed by the same software techniques. Now this can cause a problem with AM signals as AM signals have most of their signal power at the carrier frequency and so if the yellow frequency is exactly the same as your VFO frequency and you set the two frequencies exactly at the center frequency of an AM signal, then the software used to remove the DC spike will also suppress the carrier of the AM signal, which in turn will result in severe distortion of the audio. Now the way to avoid this is to ensure that you never have the VFO and the LO at the same frequency. Here I'm demonstrating this effect. So to do this, simply click your mouse away from the LO frequency in the SP1 display like this. Now you will see that the VFO frequency and the LO frequency are no longer the same. Now simply set the frequency of your VFO to the signal that you want to monitor and you will see that the offset you have created between the LO and the VFO has been maintained and as a result the DC spike removal software will no longer affect the audio of the signal you are listening to. Please remember that you will need to use this procedure every time you start SDR Uno as it default states on startup is to have the VFO frequency the same as yellow frequency. If you ever have problems with audio distortion on AM signals and you are using 0F mode, first double check that the yellow and the VFO frequencies are not the same. Please note that this effect only occurs in 0F mode. In low IF mode you will not see this effect. One new feature in SDR Uno, which applies equally to both the RSP1 and the RSP2, is a warning message if your signal level into the ADC is too high. So for example, if you have a very strong signal and your RF gain is set to be too high, it is possible that your IF AGC may run out of control range and therefore be unable to prevent the signal from overloading the ADC. And I'm showing this in this example here. This will result in a severe degradation in signal quality and now you will see an ADC overload message appearing 
in the main panel in orange text. If you ever see this message we recommend you adjust the RF gain slider until the message disappears. As I mentioned earlier, another new feature in SDR Uno is the automated frequency calibration system. You will need a precision reference to do this with. In the RX control window, tune, to, tune the VFO to the precision reference and open the Cal tab in the RX control window settings panel. There are instructions there on how to perform this calibration. Whilst streaming, you need to be in SAM mode and after making sure the precision reference is within the SP2 display, click on the AutoCal button. The PPM frequency offset is then stored and will be used from here on in automatically. This system can be used for both the RSP1 and RSP2. The SP1 display now also features a signal to noise ratio meter. This meter measures the signal power across the bandwidth defined by the filter used in the SP2 window. As well as the SNR meter reading, the SP1 display also shows a reading of the signal power in dBm. As previously mentioned, this is the power level referred back to the input of the RSP. One other important change from versions 1.04 or earlier is that the Y scale on both the SP1 and SP2 windows now read power in dBm, with the reading referred back to the input of the receiver. This enables the user to easily estimate the power of other signals not currently selected by a VFO. These displays now operate in a very similar way to a traditional spectrum analyzer display and make it easier for a user to get a clear sense for reception conditions and antenna performance. The S meter is now automatically calibrated and by default we support the IARU S meter standard where S9 is minus 93 dBm in VHF instead of minus 73 dBm in HF. You can disable this in the settings MISC panel which will enforce the HF value across the entire frequency range. The power level shown next to the frequency display in the RX control window and in the SP1 window is also calibrated for both RSP1 and RSP2. The RSP devices can now be used as accurate power meters. In tests we've seen approximately 1 dB of accuracy over greater than 100 dB of range. Another couple of pointers. If you need to modify the output filter, you can do that directly in the SP2 window by clicking on the red lines and dragging them. Also in FM mode, there is an AFC function in the EX control window, which I can show here. And if I click on a FM frequency, it will automatically tune to the nearest signal. You can also save the window layout in one of 10 workspace locations. Simply hold the left control button and then left click on the workspace field and then left click on the location you want to store the layout to. Once that is done I can then switch between layouts like this and when I restart SDR Uno it will restore my saved default workspace. We will do more videos focusing more on the detail operation of SDR UNO, but I hope this has given you some insight as to how to use the RSP2 with SDR UNO. We would appreciate any feedback you have on either SDR UNO or the RSP2, and please send it to feedback at sdrplay.com. Please also check out our other videos on YouTube, as well as our Facebook and Twitter feeds, and thank you for watching.